Well, good evening, everyone. We're going to take turns. I'm going to speak first, and then Ceci's going to speak uh, when I'm finished. Um, first of all, welcome, everyone. Um, it's wonderful to have everyone here. Uh, it's so interesting that we're speaking about our tech around the world, and, and the fight still continues. So those of us in the, in the, in the trenches still know that it's, it's still, I thought when I was here, I was here in 1991 to 1998, that things would get so much better that everyone would understand the program and the battles, you know, still continue. You've got people still coming in here and thinking, oh, I don't care about that building, I just want to be in South Beach. So uh, I just uh, want you to know that's so. That's, uh, one thing as we become more famous, we don't necessarily always draw people who have the same mindset as we do. I thought I would start with talking about the beginning of Art Deco for those people who might not be familiar. <laughs> Art Deco is, 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 is uh, uh, a term that really wasn't used until the 60s. Previous to that, the buildings were called modern or, mo modern or modern. And uh, it was a new way of looking at architecture with designs and whimsical additions and all kinds of wonderful uh, colors and neon, things that were never done before. But a lot of that came from the exposition in Paris at, uh, in 1925. And it was a bringing together for the first time paintings, fashion, uh, architecture, design, style, a whole new way of looking at, um, in a sense, using the term design. And uh, it was really an exciting opportunity for people to come together and see these, these buildings. You wonder then, how did places around the world uh, begin to put Art Deco uh, in, their, uh, in their architecture? And how they did it was we thanked two people, Fred and Ginger. <laughs> the movies were a good way of people around the world learning about this new exciting style and then making it their own. If I was to ask you what was the second largest concentration of Art Deco in the United States, people never know an answer if you're, a, if you're an Art Deco file. But most people don't know that it's Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, and Tulsa is an amazing place, and why? Because it had oil. And, no one wants to look like a hayseed, right? So you want your, your, your town to put its best foot forward. So Art Deco in the 30s was the number one style. So people wanted, wherever you were, be it Asmara in Africa, be it in uh, New York City with the, um, the um, um, Empire State Building and the Chrysler Building. The, you know, those are the highest style of Art Deco. And so around the world, because of the movies, people began to see those movies with Greta Garbo, and it happened one night, which is going to be tomorrow night at the, at the outdoor uh, uh, New, uh, New World Symphony with Claudette and Clark and others. Uh, people began to then use that in their architecture and design. Now you have to look to a little bit of history of America. How did Miami Beach develop? Well, at the time, people were beginning to get involved with the Industrial Revolution. So what would happen is people were leaving the farms and moving to the cities because of the Model T Ford. Uh, thanks to the Ford piecemeal operation, they employed that and then people began to move into the cities. And then the, for the first time in, in the world order, they had something they never had called a vacation. Well, where were people going to take the vacation? The only place in the United States at the time pretty much was Atlantic City. So this became a spot for the middle class to vacation uh, in the United States. And you could get here from the East Coast by uh, planes, small, you know, but really that wasn't the, the big way. It was really through ocean liners, through trains, and even automobiles, it just took too long to get here. And so this is the way the middle class came, and this neighborhood, this area, really developed. Can you imagine from 1929 to 1942, 800 buildings being built? I mean, people were sharing glass and cement, and you know they were making all of these amazing buildings, and it became this unusual uh, style of architecture, and it became the largest concentration of Art Deco buildings in the world. Now we're talking about the Art Deco districts, and Miami Beach has 12, soon to have Two more, it will be 14 historic districts where we will have preserved and saved uh, even more buildings. So the Art Deco style is really 
permeates throughout uh, Miami Beach and, and a few other places, but it's the largest concentration in the world. So during, from, from those era, 1929 to 1942, that's where uh, everyone came in vacation. Middle class, not, not especially amazing uh, as far as uh, today's standards, but the architecture was dazzling and something that people had never seen. And what's going to happen to this community, which you know, I give tours still, and I'm sure you, you other folks are familiar, it starts to decline. Just really quickly, the, the, the change in Cuba meant that people began to look elsewhere for, for gambling, for nightclubs, showgirls, and all that kind of stuff that was available in Havana is no longer available. So you had two vacations for the price of one. You had here, and then you could go by hydrofoil over to, to uh, Havana for lunch, dinner, and really partake in the, in the high life that was available. What's gonna happen is, it's gonna turn into Las Vegas. That's gonna be developed for the very first time. And Las Vegas then becomes the capital of gambling and nightclub and cabaret and all of that. So Miami Beach has now got some competition. And as Cuba changes as well, um, the, whole, the whole nature of vacation is gonna change because of the, 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 the uh, invention of the jumbo jet airliner. Once the jumbo jet airliner comes into, into, into use, people then can fly anywhere in the world and Miami Beach further declines. You also had the Fifth Avenue of the South, which was the Lincoln Road. And Lincoln Road was where Saks was and, and Harry Winston and so many of the high-end shops. They're gonna leave and they're gonna move to a place that no one ever heard of, Ball Harbor. And why is that? It's because in 1954, the largest hotel in the world was built by Morris Lapidus and that was called the Fontainebleau. And next door was the Eden Rock and then the, the uh, Netherlands and the Deauville and all these wonderful new bigger buildings that are now called Miami Modern, but in those days they were resort architecture and they had something these cute little buildings didn't have. They had meeting space because the notion of a meeting didn't take place from 29 to, you just went on vacation, you didn't go to a meeting. And as we develop techno uh, technological, you can now go on a meeting in the Fontainebleau and Eden Rock, they're having meeting space. Secondly, they have swimming pools. Swimming pools really didn't exist here. They're popular now because the Tiffany and the Tides and a number of buildings have put swimming pool, but they have to strengthen the building to hold all that water. That water weighs a ton. So that's how they've added them now, but they were not thought of in those days. So, and the third thing is restaurants and shops. All people did was come here on vacation and eat in restaurants, but they didn't have it all. It wasn't a resort. The notion of a resort didn't exist. So all of this happens, uh, and Miami Beach continues to decline, and in America, we like to go to the next best place. So we're now going to the Miami the modern buildings, Frank Sinatra, the Rat Pack, all of these people are now uh, 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 vacationing in these much bigger resorts, and then the resorts around the world are being taken care of. But one interesting thing, Jews would not have been allowed to vacation in Miami Beach, in the 20s, it was, it was a segregated country, if you will, and uh, the only uh, real big development was the Jewish, which is now the Jewish Museum, but was the um, temple that was built at 3rd in Washington. So that was a place for Jews to, to worship, but not live, and it was very difficult because of segregation at, the, at that point. And what's gonna happen is, as World War II comes, uh, uh, into being, a lot of the soldiers were stationed here. So this is the first time men and some women around the world got to see this wonderful land called Miami Beach, this vacation paradise, even if they were here marching uh, on the Ocean Drive and marching. So they were introduced to Miami Beach and this amazing wonderland. They go overseas, but when the war is over, what do they do? They want to come back and honeymoon here. And so you have so many people coming and honeymooning, honeymooning here, no longer are the Jews excluded, so many are coming here and it reminds them so much of where they're from. Two-story pedestrian buildings, the Bauhaus architecture they grew up with, so they begin to vacation here more and more and become, it becomes very popular. Well, as I told you, it's declining, but the most important invention during all of this era is the air conditioner. 
And the air conditioner now means that people can come and stay longer. Because in Miami Beach, people came in, uh, they came in November and they left in April and the rest of the year the place was empty. You just had a guard, you know, watching your building or whatever. But so uh, what you have now, you people can live year round. And the Jews who were not allowed to live here or vacation here are now settling here in, in, in large numbers and it now becomes a, a, a pretty much a Jewish enclave. And, you know, the rule is, in America, you never stay in the town you grow up in. You guys say more. And so people all leave Miami Beach, and many of them go back to Brooklyn, the exact place their grandparents left. You know, uh, Brooklyn being so popular today. So you have all of these cultural kind of things going on, and Miami Beach declining, and then you have the Barrelli to Bolives, where so many people come from Cuba, many of the wonderful and great folks move into Miami, uh, a lot of the people, this is fixed income, so they come here and they stay here. Miami Beach further declines. There's lots of problems. And then an angel, I think you can have a Jewish angel, right? And Barbara Kappenman just is writing a book called Rediscovering Art Deco. Because in the United States, we go through um, uh, design styles, right? You have the new, remember uh, uh, New Mexican style, Santa Fe? And then when you were done with that, you threw that out and you got the industrial style with the neon lighting and the big gray movable furniture and so forth and so on. So she was traveling around the United States to places where Art Deco had been very popular but now was forgotten. And she was photographing in Brooklyn and in New York and in Cleveland and all of these places around the United States. And I will tell you, when she takes over the league and creates the league, she also creates the International Art Deco Societies. And because she had visited all those cities, she was able to form an organization that lives today, where all of these societies still uh, associate with each other. But anyway, she comes here and she begins to agitate for uh, this, uh, this area. Now you notice it's not called the Miami Beach Design Preservation League. And the reason is because the Miami Design District is where she got all her help. Those were people there that understood. They were designers and architects. And, and so she named the organization the Miami Design Preservation League and begins to uh, change everyone's, you know, deco schmeco for those people who've never heard that expression. So as that changes and everyone agitates, and some in this room were here for those early days to really uh, save the, the style of architecture. I became the executive director in 91. In 92 and 93, you know, the, if, you can't, if you can't beat them, you vote them out of office. So we began to vote into office people that understood the history of the community and the culture and began to start creating districts, historic districts that meant there would not be uh, the demolition and preservation would be very important. So you have all of this happening. And then you have where I work today, and I work today at the Greater Miami Convention and Business Bureau. Um, I'll have been there 20 years on the 19th of this month. My last Art Deco weekend was 1998. And, um, and the object was, now remember, 20 years later, but the early years, what was there to promote about Miami? What they used to promote about Greater Miami was the Fontainebleau and the Eden Rock. They didn't really look to any of the buildings here because they weren't thought of as, as anything, as junk. And uh, as that view changed, Barbara and volunteers changed the way people thought. One of the most important ways that she and we and they did that was through historic blogging tours. Because at the end of a tour, you've changed someone's mind. They've learned what preservation is. They've seen how bad uh, destruction of the New Yorker, what that meant, the destruction of, of a number of other buildings. The biggest uh, destruction in Miami Beach was the Rodin Palace. And if that were still, if still here today, it would be one of the most important hotels in all of Florida. But of course, they have that lovely Rodin, Rodin Palace today. Anyway, um, so all of these things are taking place, so that as a foundation, what I'd like to do is show you a little bit about some architecture that influenced Miami Beach. And then I will then talk about how we use the images to promote Miami uh, Beach around the world. But I want to give you a little foundation to understand how important these buildings are, not only to us, 
not only to locally, but nationally and internationally. These are the most important buildings. And what kind of a draw were they? How do you think the Miami City Ballet got here? They came here because the architecture was here. How did um, the New World Symphony evolve? Because of the architecture and so forth. And the Art Center of South Florida, which we don't want to forget, which is one of the really foundations. Uh, and you know they just sold one of their buildings for $88 million. Uh -huh. So um, it's, you know, that shows you how popular the buildings are. So if you could, I think I lower the lights. Okay. And I'll give you just a pre visual, a brief visual. So look at some of the Art, art Deco styles that designed the rounded, the streamlined. This is in Shanghai, China, thanks to my friends in the front row. So you get to see some, doesn't it look like it could be on Miami Beach? It looks, it looks like the Plymouth. This is the interior lobby. Look at that building. I mean, I just want to show you the relationships sorry, of uh, Art Deco, not only to Miami Beach, but around the world, and some new interpretations. Helsinki, Finland. And we have uh, the building um, up on uh, Collins with the Karatans. The uh, Which one? Yeah, Casablanca, thank you. Michael and Dennis would love that. Yeah, Helsinki. I tried to choose places you wouldn't normally see. It's interesting you see a correlation between this and the, and the lighthouse that's now over in uh, South Point Park. Yes, you're right. How about that one? Spring, South Africa. Could be in Miami Beach. So you can see the movies and, 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 and that uh, international conference really was introducing so much of architecture to the world. How about that building? Isn't that amazing? Right. Cadillac, which is, I think, under renovation now. Well, the colony. Sort of uh, wonderful style. Right. Well, look at the, look at the round, the, the portal windows, the, the, uh, the, oh, uh -oh. Now some new architecture, because I want to show where some people get new ideas from, from our, our buildings in Miami Beach. You know where that is? Frank Gehry, the interior. The uh, most unusual parking lot in the world. The Perez, using Stiltsville for, for its um, Inspiration. So there you have 